Zero W8, that's the thinnest SAE viscosity grade. Hi, I'm Lake, the motor oil geek. You know, you can't even find Zero W8 on the parts store shelf. So is the dealership actually going to use Zero W8? Let's find out. This is my daughter's 2023 Toyota Corolla. The odometer's just over 10,000 miles, so it's time for the first free oil change at the dealership. But before we take the car to the dealership, let's take an oil sample via the vacuum pump to find out how that oil is doing. Because while the odometer says there's 10,000 miles on the oil, there's not. We've already changed the oil twice. We've actually done that in two previous videos. We'll leave a link for those in the description box below if you want to catch up, because there was no way we were going to go 10,000 miles on the first oil drain. But most importantly, this sample is going to be to tell us a comparison to what they put in the car, because we already know what's in the car right now, but I want to know what they're going to put in at the dealership. We can compare those previous samples and the one we're taking today to what they put in the car when we get back home from the dealership. Because this car is a bit unique. It was built in Japan. Now, that doesn't make it unique, but it was built in Japan before the API, the American Petroleum Institute, approved the use of zero W8 motor oils here in the United States. That's right, this car calls for zero W8 motor oil, but at the time that she purchased the car, which was back in August of 2023, the API had not yet approved the use of zero W8 oils in the United States. That actually wasn't done until September. So when we did that first oil change at around 700 miles, we couldn't get zero W8. The closest we could get was the UW16, which is what's in the car right now. Toyota Genuine Zero W16. So let's talk about those Zero W8 and Zero W12 viscosity grades just for a minute. So prior to 2015, SAE only defined viscosity grades as low as Zero W20. There wasn't anything thinner than that. So then they came out with Zero 16, Zero 12, and zero W8. Initially, API only accepted zero W16. Then later they came up and they approved and accepted zero 12 and zero W8. During that last nine years when they weren't doing that, I actually did some work with both Oak Ridge National Lab and General Motors, and we actually did engine testing and lab bench testing with a zero W12 formula and we compared that against the reference oil at the time which was mobile one 5w30 their gm dexos one gen 2 approved formula so what we saw when we went from dexos one gen 2 5w30 when we went to the zero w12 now this was a full synthetic with really unique advanced chemistry not something you can buy anywhere in the world today. But despite that change in viscosity, the offset in that increased additive package, we actually saw less wear in the engine, even at a 150 hour durability test at 150 degrees Celsius oil temperature, the 012 actually protected every bit as good, if not actually better than the 5W30. So don't be afraid of the viscosity grade just because it's thinner. Sometimes that additive package can make a difference where it can do a better job despite being thinner. So it's going to be interesting to see what they actually install at the dealership. Is it the Toyota Zero W16? Or is it the Zero W8? Or is it something completely different? Let's find out. So taking a sample via a vacuum pump is pretty simple. You have this tube, which you feed into the pump right here. You screw this lever down to lock that in. Then you take your sample bottle and you screw the sample bottle 
onto the pump, then it becomes super easy. You actually remove the dipstick and this will go straight down the dipstick tube. Then you can pull oil right from the sump without having to do an oil change. Pretty convenient. Then you just pump away. Just like that, here comes our oil sample. You're done. Just crack that and that releases the pressure and we're done. No fuss, no muss. So we have our control sample of what we just took out of the engine. Now let's go to the dealership, have them do the oil change. We'll come back, we'll take another sample and find out what they put into the engine. So one thing about this car that's also unique is that it has a CVT transmission. That's a continuous variable transmission. So as I drive here, I'm gonna let you get the example of that. So perfect, we've got a red light and we're coming up here and it's gonna go green and watch. I'm gonna press the throttle. And you see how the RPMs are pretty much staying right there and it's not dropping back because it's not shifting gears because this is a continuous variable transmission, a CVT, which is why you didn't see it make those gear shifts because there's no gears to be shifted. Now, one of the things about these CVTs, because there's no gears and it's using this chain running in between a wedge, it can cause a lot of wear. So what we wanna do is we wanna change this transmission fluid early, just like we've done the engine oil. Now, I was gonna do it at home when I did the first engine oil change. But in the owner's manual, I couldn't find anywhere that listed where the drain plug for the transmission was. And I was not going to risk it. So we're just gonna let the dealership do it here at this first oil change. So I've brought an oil analysis kit with me to give to the dealership. So hopefully they will take a sample of the used transmission fluid for us so we can analyze that as well. Cause I'm really kind of curious to see what the CVT fluid looks like. And just so you know, don't use any other kind of oil in a CVT other than the CVT fluid. It needs a certain level of traction. So like a modern ATF is designed to be low friction so that the clutches engage smoothly so you don't you know, have a, that hard shift and spill your coffee on yourself when you're you know, accelerating away from a stoplight. With a CVT, it actually needs a higher level of traction so that that chain can grip within the two bodies that hold it. So CVT fluids are designed specifically for CVT transmissions. So never use a fluid that isn't specifically for CVTs in a CVT transmission and don't use a CVT fluid in something like an automatic transmission because the level of friction is just gonna be wrong. Here we are at the dealership. The moment of truth, so they say. Oh, not really, I guess the moment of truth when we, when we actually look at the oil sample results when we get them back for the lab. But this feels like it's something important happening right now. Okay, oil change in both the engine and CVT transmission is done. And the guys here at the Hendrick Toyota here in Concord were nice enough to take a sample of the CVT fluid. And I was wondering if they were actually gonna take a sample from the engine oil or the tranny. I asked them to take it from the transmission, but I wasn't sure. But I know they actually did take it from the transmission because it is red. By the way, red is just a dye they add so you can know if it's transmission fluid and not get it confused with the engine oil because you can't tell from the viscosity alone whether or not it's engine oil or transmission fluid. We're back from the dealership getting our free oil change. Let's take a sample and find out what they put in. Hood back up. This time we'll use a new tube so we don't cross contaminate and get some kind of, well, cross contamination. Okay, we fed the tube in, it's all the way to the bottom. Now time to take the sample. Ooh, that comes fast. Well, it's thin oil and it's hot, so 
not surprising. Nice and warmed up. And there we go. It's that simple, clean and neat. Now let's send the samples off to the lab and come back with the results, which normally take about six to seven business days, but through the magic of editing, you get them right. So, you know, it's nice to have results that confirm a little bit of faith in humanity. So how good was the free oil? Well, they actually used the Toyota Zero W8, and we can see that from these results. Before we get too crazy, let's look at the results from taking the pump sample before we had the oil change to see how was that engine doing? How was that break-in coming along? And what's neat to see is that there was still a little bit of that silicon carrying over. There was just so much silicon in the very beginning, and we now know that it came from the gasket that goes on the oil filter, and even the Toyota Genuine filter has some of that silicon grease on the gasket. So a little bit of that came from that. Everything else looks really, really good. The wear rate dropped even more. It went from nine. So remember the very beginning, it was at 90 parts per million per 1000 miles. Then it dropped down to nine parts per million per 1000 miles. Now at 7,500 ish miles, it's down to four parts per million. So really nice trend on the break-in. Everything is doing exactly what you would hope it to do. The wear metals are nice and low. They've settled in really about the same numbers as they were at around 3,000 miles at 7,500 miles, which just goes to show everything is happy. The engine's breaking in wonderfully, beautifully. So my plan to help my daughter out by doing those early oil changes, paying dividends already, we see it. I'm happy with that. The dealership actually installed the Zero W8. Now, we mentioned earlier that at the time that she bought this car, which was in August of 2023, API had not yet approved the use of Zero W8 or Zero W12 oils. Now, since September of 2023, they had been approved. So the dealership actually installed the Zero W8, and just those 50 miles or so of you know, getting the car back home and then taking the sample, we now have a good baseline going forward to see, all right, they want us to go 10,000 miles before the next oil change. So what we're gonna do is we'll come back and we'll take a couple of more samples. We'll do one at 5,000 miles, we'll do one at 7,500 miles, and then we'll do one at 10,000 using the pump so to see how does this oil aging, what's it happening in terms of the wear rate, what's happening with the oxidation, to see is that 10,000 miles, is it going to be too far for this oil? Now, we kind of know already, kind of looking at this data, that at 7,500 miles, it was doing really good. But that was the 016, not the 0W8. And we can tell the additive package between the two, very similar, not a lot of difference there. That calcium levels, you know, right around 1100 to 1400 parts per million, that safe zone for protecting against low speed pre-ignition. This is a direct injection engine, so we don't want too much calcium. It has a really nice amount of molybdenum in that 700 part per million range. So it's got that good equal level of ZDP and molybdenum, which we know works really well, even in race engines, like we mentioned in the previous video. So super excited about these results, happy that that wear rate has come down, the silicon is getting out of the system, everything looks really good. What's nice to see is that the free oil change wasn't some kind of budget oil they put in there. They put in the good stuff and did the job right, which is great. The other thing we did here as well is we took a drain sample from the CVT and everything from that drain sample of the CVT fluid looks right in line with what you'd expect. I mean, it's a very low viscosity oil, 5.3 cinestokes. I'll tell you what, Toyota is not afraid to use some thin oils, but they're using good high quality oils. So you can tell that oxidation value, basically very brand new, this is pretty early stuff and oxidation value on gear oils and transmission fluids doesn't change like it does in engine oils because it doesn't have that 
combustion exposure. It doesn't have all the heat and things. So this is a unique synthetic fluid designed for this application. That lower viscosity isn't a problem in this application because it has the correct chemistry for the application to provide the traction that is needed for those CVT to, to function properly. So we can tell it has that. It doesn't have any kind of friction modifiers in there that would be letting the chains and the things slip. So properly designed fluid for the application and the results look great. I mean, you could say we probably didn't, didn't even need to do it, but I feel a lot better getting even that little bit of debris out of the transmission because basically they say these things are filled for life. They're going to go for a really, really long time. And at least this way, we've got all that stuff out of there. So I feel really good about the job they did. And more importantly, as a dad, I feel great about taking care of my daughter's car. It's got a good bill of health. She can go drive it, do what she needs to do. And you know what? At the end of the day, that's what you're trying to do, right? Is get good longevity and reliability out of the vehicles for those people you love as well as for yourself. And that's what we did here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.